Let's watch, uh, why do content creators get everything now? We're often tormented by the fact we're not everything we could be. There was once a content creator tormented by images of perfection. Who is it? And these ideas of torment were not just embodied within his thoughts or feelings. No, these ideas were physically embodied in front of him. Okay. And we tried fighting these demons and ended up conquering them only to be punished for his actions. That's unfair. We're often tormented by the fact we're not <laughs> everything we could be. And there's this vision we have, an idealization of the person we want to be. Oftentimes, it's this very image which torments us within our sleep. Do you think kills equals skills is actually the most controversial video in Dead by Daylight? Because I think that most people were v was very on board with kills versus equals skills when uh, when I made it. He's not talking about kills equals skills, is he? He's talking about the dev Q and A. It all started with a developer live stream that was broadcasted live on yep. January twentieth, twenty twenty two. Matter in fact, this would become one of the last live broadcasted Q&As. Please understand I am simplifying some things here. Don't read too, too much into every detail I'm saying. I'm trying to keep this brief. Uh, but there's a common misconception that by using just kills and escapes to adjust your MMR, it's ignoring skill in the game. This isn't the truth though, this is false. So and I'll use hockey as an example. You wouldn't say they only count wins when placing teams in the standings, but they should also count shots on goal too. A more skilled player takes more shots. The shots lead to goals, which lead to wins. Skilled play leads to wins. If they don't, are they really skilled plays? <laughs> <laughs> oh, those words still haunt me to this day. I uh, sometimes wake up nightmares of Patrick's face in my mind. If they don't, are they really skilled plays in the first place? Right? <laughs> what, a, what a time that was. This is when Dowsy decided to challenge this statement, pointing out the flaws within his argument, even when explicitly told not to do so. Mm. If running the killer for five gens doesn't get you a win, was it really a skilled play in the first place? I, I, I'm gonna expect the chat to explode in two seconds. With that law. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I definitely got told a lot of times not to, to say certain things. When I was a consultant for Dead by Daylight, uh, before they called them live consultants, I think they were called Ravens back then. It was a NDA, very heavy NDA program. The only reason I'm talking about it now is because they made it public, so I can now talk about it. They invited me into the program. This was after I became a Fog Whisperer. So I became a Fog Whisperer and the influencer managers at Behavior were very restrictive on the kind of content that you can uh, you could make. Um, anytime you made content that wasn't quite in line with stuff that they wanted, they would talk to you about that. I talked to them specifically about kind of content I wanted to make. It was modded content back when Reknack was making the prop hunt in Dead by Daylight and the 2v8 in Dead by Daylight videos back before, you know, 2v8 was even a thing. And Behavior's uh, influencer managers explicitly told me that I would lose Vogue Whisperer if I made those videos. Same as uh, with the Raven stuff. You could not talk about being a raven. And honestly, being a live consultant, it was frustrating because there were so many times where you would see really good feedback from the people. And these people weren't all content creators. A lot of them were just longtime DVD players. The feedback that was put into those programs was very much taken very rarely by the behavior devs. And they didn't really much note of it. My key example of that is that uh, sometimes Otz would literally give them documents of changes that he believed would be good for Dead by Daylight and a lot of the stuff that Otz put in these documents I personally agreed with and you would never see any of these things be touched or addressed at all. You had a direct line to the developers, the lead developers, uh, the Patrick level developers at Behavior and they just did not take the feedback on very seriously as far as I personally was considered. I guess I'm one of the worst survivors to ever exist. There's no f***ing way. Girl, what? Are they cracked out? All Twitch chat blew up at this too. They were furious. They are really dedicated to their version of MMR. That it's blinded them to the truth. As a result of Dowsy's following tweet, I logged on today to find my Twitch shirt in Dead by Daylight had been removed from my account. Everyone at first told me that there was no way it had anything to do with this. <laughs> 
So I actually had to email the support about it to find out whether or not it was to do with this. So when this happened, Dowsy reached out to ask Dowsy. if there was some sort of mistake. And Behavior replied, Hello, Josh. The team was made aware of some recent conduct that does not meet the standards of exemplary conduct that content creators who own these items are expected to uphold. In this case, starting a member of the development team. As such, these items have been removed and will not be returned. This decision is final. Targeting a member of the developer team is such a crazy take from anyone. Like, yes, Patrick was the main person of my critique, but he was also the only face of Dead by Daylight that was saying BS. Peanuts was on that stream and didn't say anything crazy. There was other people on that stream and didn't say anything crazy. Patrick was the one who was saying crazy stuff. So Patrick was the one who received the criticism for what he said. It's, it, it, yeah. Firstly, was behavior in the right to take away his Twitch shirts? Secondly, if their argument was logically sound, wouldn't it just have been better to counter Dowsy with words? What if his position was indefensible? And most importantly, what if Dowsy was right? <gasps> Dowsy was right? Imagine. Um, also, do you know what the crazy thing about like Twitch shirts are? Like they're a cosmetic that Twitch allow game developers to use. And realistically, most game developers just use them as a way to have extra cosmetics in their games. But Behavior have decided to like create this whole ecosystem around the Twitch shirt. I'm sure if enough people revolted against, they could actually have like Twitch change how Behavior use Twitch shirts. Like, <laughs> because at the end, they're, they're Twitch's property. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's neither here nor there. In response to all this, Dowsy made a video. Kills equal skill, which would turn out to be one of the most impactful videos in the history of Dead by Daylight. This video would become the reason for not just one or two, but three killer nerfs to come, and likely was the reason for a complete revamp to the way behavior developed Dead by Daylight. Let's Whoa. start. Time to play some Dead by Daylight. Let's make sure I don't say anything that will get more cosmetics removed. <laughs> all right, this is taking a little while. Let's get a word all done for today. An I and a K. Oh yes, of course, Kills has an I and a K in it. Wait a second. Oh my God. I actually- Yeah, that um, that word all for, for what it was worth. When I, uh, <laughs> when I found the skill word all, randomly i just knew that had to be the video like i think the wordle was kind of the inspiration for the video and i was like yep it has to be that has to be the youtube video you think i owe patrick an apology i cannot believe i didn't see it before kills equal skill and i know exactly what i need to do to become a high mmr dead by dead also look how much weight i've lost since then guys like i got a big bushy beard right now so like maybe it's not so obvious but damn i've lost some weight haven't i like play. I'm going to be the most skillful killer this game has ever seen. First, down to survivor. Okay, so our first lucky survivor, we'll just chuck her on this uh this scourge hook here and start camping them. Two kills already. Wow. We are definitely playing a skillful game of Dead by Daylight. Oh, there's one. I'm fast as fuck, boy. Oh, wow. Nice stun. Now, obviously, stunning isn't necessarily skillful. Neither is running the killer for a long period of time. All right. Well, nice try, Meg. You tried to outrun me, but I guess you weren't skillful enough in this game. And so... One of the things I find very interesting and, and kind of based, if you think about it, from Behavior's Depths is that even though that Meg did a pretty good job of extending a chase versus me, if she dies now, none of that matters because if you die at the end of the game, then that is more of a representation of your skill than if you were able to do anything during the game itself. Right. Skilled play leads to wins. If they don't, are they really skilled plays? <laughs> right? If your skilled play doesn't get you to win, was it really a skilled play in the first place? Don't really want to question that really too much or else I might, might have my cosmetics removed. Oh, sorry, Meg. Not skillful enough this game. Nice try though, but uh, everything you did didn't matter in the end because you died. <laughs> this is why Behavior added an anti-camping feature to Dead by Daylight, mm -hmm. which fills a meter whenever the killer is within 16 meters of the hook. 
Once this meter is full, the hooked survivor is granted the ability to successfully unhook themselves. And next came the pig. So I looked up a guide on how to be an efficient and skillful high MMR killer. All right, here we go. We'll have to see which box makes most sense to stand in front of. Maybe just this one, because it's right here. Yeah, I guess we just have to go for the one that we spawned in front of, right? Will the survivors do generators activating the bear traps? And it's active. Uh, hey, Jonah, how you doing? Nice to see you. Yeah, that, that's fine. I, I'm this gonna, pig I'm meta was hard to versus. Bit, all right, mate. Don't worry about yeah. it. If that this video happen, definitely uh, encouraged the bears to fix this. Right now, then that's it. Jonah's dead. I can kill a survival without lifting a muscle. This is high MMR gameplay for sure. Pig could do the very exact thing Leatherface could. So behavior completely reworked Pig's ability. And according to an official developer patch note, some big players have been camping out in front of the final jigsaw box, blocking a survivor from being able to get rid of their reverse bear trap. <laughs> Which big player's behavior? Which ones are you talking about? Kills equals skill in Dead by Daylight, but I'm not done yet skilled play inherently leads to kills or escapes you wouldn't say they only count wins when placing teams in the standings but you <clears> should <throat> also count shots on goal too a more skilled player takes more shots it's important to remember that shots lead to goals which lead to wins so shots lead to goals which lead to wins in dead by daylight but that doesn't make any sense if we put our minds to it we can become the best esports competitive hockey goalie that Dead by Daylight has to offer. Honestly, Patrick gave us such a, uh, a gem with that line, didn't he? Treatment Theater, the greatest hockey arena alive, known to man. And we will see exactly why Dead by Daylight is like hockey. All right. Okay. All right, that's our Remember Me stacked up. There's our fourth stack of No Way Out. And now we just need to find Nia. Now for the finest part of my plan. With no obsession to stop me, I go to my exit gate and I wait to become the true Dead by Daylight hockey goalie that I can be. It's the anticipation of generators being done. The sheer determination and skill to predict and block goals. And I'm ready to finalize Patrick's true vision to become the high MMR killer that Dead by Daylight didn't deserve, but they needed. <laughs> Open. What the f are you doing right here? Oh my god! She's the best player of Dead by Daylight I've ever seen! My goalie skills were not enough! But it's fine. I don't let that falter. At the end of the day, a goal scored against you is not great, but you can still come back. As long as you are determined and ready and waiting. Oh. I can't believe that we went up against the best player in Dead by Daylight. That Kate, honestly, was the most skillful player I've ever seen. To overcome this strategy so well by just sitting behind me at the exit gate, no one ever thought of it before. You think you can get past me, Kate? Think again, Kate. No way are you getting out of this exit gate. Yes, you can both be here. You can both try, but no, you cannot get past me because I know how to block this gate. You shall not pass, the great Gandalf once said and you better start running. That's right. I have trained so hard for this very moment. This is pure skill in Dead by Daylight. This is survivors dying because they do not know how to play hockey. If only they were like that fabulous goal scorer back there who understood the aim of Dead by Daylight is to score as many goals as possible. It's too late because the goalie is here and you will not pass him. is how the developers want you to play the game so i implore you to go enjoy yourself Nerf. <laughs> that was uh such a malicious compliance video wasn't it like patrick says that this is what skill in dead by daylight is behavior says don't criticize patrick it's considered targeted harassment bet all right instead of targeting harassment of patrick i will maliciously comply with patrick and see how you react to it
And well, how did they react to it? So many fucking killer nerfs and changes, which ultimately was great for the game. The whole point of this video was to kind of get across how ridiculous they were being with the situation. As a result of this video, Behavior realized there were some flaws with their logic. Whoa. So they implemented changes to remove these three playstyles from the game. And eight months after the release of this video, Patrick announced his departure from working at Behavior Interactive. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he quoted on his reason for leaving the company, Dalsy. <laughs> yeah, in his exit interview, he was like, "Yeah, it's just that Dalsy guy." Yeah. <laughs> it seemed Dalsy had gotten his point across, showed the developers why their ideas were wrong, with the development team responding accordingly thereafter. So, everything was good, right? I'll be honest with you, I really wish that were the case. <gasps> Hero of Dead by Daylight left the game? This is so sad. <laughs> Whilst nerfing these strategies made them less viable, did this make behavior's logic behind skill any more correct? What if there were more playstyles like this? And if there were, would that mean these killers needed nerfs too? Well. That's exactly what I wanted to find out. There was once a game developer named Almo who was using iridescent heads on Huntress. He wound up a hatchet and started staring at a hooked survivor. He loved doing this, by the way. Uh, I, I don't know if Almo still works on Dead by Daylight, but pretty much anything you would consider toxic about Dead by Daylight was like Almo's favorite play style, which is why that kind of stuff stayed in the game the way it was for so long. I'm not even joking, like not to shit on Almo at all. He's a really nice guy. If you've ever watched his streams, he's a really, really down to earth person. It's just he was in charge of a lot of Dead by Daylight balance. And some of his favorite things about Dead by Daylight was probably the stuff about Dead by Daylight people dislike the most in the game. And it took a long time, I think, for the um the dev team to kind of take that control back and start moving the game away from these play styles that the community had learned to abuse. If he held this position for the remainder of the match, he could effectively camp every survivor until they were sacrificed. And as a P100 Huntress main myself, this is the first time I'd ever seen a strategy like this. So I decided to try it out. And essentially, I did this until everyone was dead. This is probably the reason Behavior also nerfed Iridescent Heads, capping the maximum you can hold to just one. This strategy still works, which leads me to my next killer, Michael Myers. Insert obligatory kills equals skill statement here. Michael Myers has an add-on called Tombstone Piece, which allows him to instantly kill survivors. Now, now, um, let's go find the next Sable, I guess. Hmm. So now we're gonna go to Sable. <laughs> okay, now, Sable's dead. Wow. Ah! It w <laughs> and wow, would you look at that? That was a 4K. That was like a four minute game. Yeah, seems about right. And now, if we go by the developer's logic behind kills equals skill, I think I just found two more killers in need of a nerf. But wait. Kills equals skill in Dead by Daylight. But, but I'm, I'm not, not done, done yet. yet. <laughs> because this time, I'm not just doing one killer, but two killers at the same time. Whoa. Namely, with Trapper and Hag. Some Undertale okay, music, so let's go. For basement Trapper, we're gonna trap up the door, the window, and also... Oh, okay. Maybe don't mind if you go upstairs, yeah. Get closer, get closer. Clutch Poppy, come in clutch. Oh. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got two crazy boys that come down to Grandpa's pantry. Grandpa be cooking. Grandpa wants to take you down so you can bake some cookies for him. <laughs> we ha also have a, another ring <laughs> alarm system. I'm very concerned uh, about coconuts, guys. Can we check in on coconuts, please? <laughs> And they paid the iron price for setting off my 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 Jeff Bezos alarm system. Okay. No, no, that that's everybody dead. And uh, well, yeah, 
Everyone, everyone's dead. I now not only killed survivors by standing still, but by staring at them and only staying in shock. Huntress, Myers, Trapper, and Hat. Do these killers need a nerf? There's a common misconception using just kills and escapes to adjust your MMR. It's ignoring skill in the game. Uh, this isn't the truth though, this is false. Kills and escapes are proxies for skill, in that skilled play inherently leads to kills or escapes. It's important to remember that shots lead to goals, which lead to wins. So you can kind of cut the middleman out there. So who that's just not how things work. You can't cut the middleman out because it's a, fa a flawed argument to begin with, Patrick. <sighs> I mean, if, 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 if the simplicity of it was true, then yes, you don't need a middleman, but it's not. And we all know it's not. <laughs> and you knew it wasn't. <sighs> it's just so frustrating to hear it be like said to you like that. You know what I mean? Because we all knew that kills and escapes, whilst indicators of skill aren't the only skillful determiners and factors in Dead by Daylight. So to remove all form of middleman, which would be other indicators that could uh, indicate your skill. How long you spend in a chase as a survivor, how much gen time you spend, how many heals and hook rescues you get. As a killer, how many hooks you get, for example, would be a really huge indicator of skill. Um, how many hits... Uh, like these kind of things lead to more accurate MMR systems. And I, I, I don't think like Dead by Daylight MMR ever needed to be hugely accurate. But um, to <laughs> make the statement that kills and escapes are the only things that matter in Dead by Daylight uh, really does simplify the game to a, a really bad level, in my opinion. Who exactly is this middleman? Is he important? And most importantly, why does cutting him out lead to so many killer nerfs. When the night released and the meta with Jen kicking nowhere to hide, I started to feel like the game was going in a really bad direction balance wise, a very stale direction. I mean, I used it, of course, because that's what you do, but I didn't necessarily like the meta that was being created. And then the behavior team showed the score merchant on the PTB. And I've covered every PTB in Dead by Daylight since the Spirits release. And this is the first time on a public test build. How crazy is that, like, that shot there of Spirit to Night release? Just to show you how long I've been doing this and how long I've been trying to bring people content and, and cover these things for. And I've covered every PTB in Dead by Daylight since the Spirits release. And this is the first time on a public test build that I played only a handful of matches and went, I can't do this anymore. I hate this so much. Genuinely have such disdain towards this product that's being presented to me. For maybe... Yeah, and, and I really hoped and I prayed that they had uh, some changes in mind for us between the PTB's release and the actual killer's release. But yeah, no, uh, they didn't. And I'm glad to hear that things are much better in the game now. Uh, but then was probably the darkest hour for Do Dead by Daylight, in my opinion. In two years now, I've been talking about Dead by Daylight's meta and how I believe the meta is stale and how the current design team from Behaviour showcases to me personally that I don't believe they have an understanding of how to balance Dead by Daylight to be fun again. The continued release of characters like the Skull Merchant and the Knight and perks that accompany them show that Behaviour are pretty happy, honestly, creating unfun metas for both Killer and the Survivor. When Killers are optimized behind the sentiment, kills equal skill, a set of problems begin rising to the surface. Killers can win matches AFK, camping, Boring, holding hatchets, staying in one place, leading to a massive sweep of nerfs, which sounds reasonable at first, until you realize seven killers and counting need nerfs because of it. A system designed behind kills further incentivizes players to use builds optimizing kills. I mean, I used it, of course, because that's what you do. Thus, killers gravitate towards these builds until these are the only viable builds left leading to the aforementioned stale meta Dowsy mentioned previously. I started to feel like the game was going in a really bad direction balance-wise, a very stale direction. And Behavior's constant nerfs don't actually help any of this, but limit the pool of viable builds even more. Which is why this 2v8 game mode has been such a, a breath of fresh air and it is something new. You can't just nerf and adjust balance and expect people to think it's fresh. That is just fixing issues. You have to innovate to bring a feeling of freshness to a game. 
And DLCs help with that. New killers help with that. New perks help with that. New maps help with that. But in reality, you want to pe keep people playing your game and, and feeling your, like your game is fresh. You actually got to add things to the game and change things really largely about the game as well. Now, if kills equals skill incentivizes killers to play in ways that are actually unskilled, what does optimizing around kills actually mean? It optimizes the game around kills. That's all it does. Just as many kills as possible. And so if we assume kills do not equal skill, is there a replacement that's possibly better? Yeah, for, for killers um hooks is probably a true being able to get a 4k with 12 hooks is more impressive than being able to get a 4k with four hooks let's be real or in the game uh of of the pig i think i got a 4k with one hook yeah and i'm sorry coconut that that i've, I've kind of done you dirty by pausing there but you know what uh, you've done me dirty multiple times when you've done reaction videos so suck it maybe there is <laughs> Remember how Behavior mentioned they were cutting the middleman out from the equation? I think the answer lies in that very statement. And this leads me to one of the most hotly debated topics in all of Dead by Daylight. Of kills versus hooks being used as a metric of skill for matchmaking in the game. And thus, we have our middleman existing in a debate between true talent and alt star. Three years ago. It's crazy how much we've talked about this and how many times stuff like this gets brought up over and over and over again and it still doesn't bear any weight on design how do you feel that this game could be balanced that you would have an average of two kills would you want that i wouldn't base it on right. kills i'd base it on hooks the main discussion three years ago was should the game be balanced around hooks or kills these clips have been taken from two completely different timelines the first clip is from before kills equals skill and also before the implementation of the kills equal skill based matchmaking system. The second clip is from after kills equal skill and also after the official implementation of the kills equal skill based matchmaking system. I think that you're, kills you're as a right. method encompasses more gameplay choices and is an adequate way to measure your success. Obviously, if it's kills and then it counts something else, that's wonderful. This is literally my stance. Okay. If you push this game where it's all about hooks, not the kills, I think it goes a healthier direction. You're talking about those first few months or weeks of MMR where it was super destroyed strict. A lot, destroyed a lot of DVD that a lot of people left. I know. No, I know what you mean. Talks, no, that was, that was terrible, like, dude. When I play Survivor, I really enjoy Chase. When I go against one of these killers who try um, to just get kills, mm -hmm. it's so boring. I went against a skull merchant. I don't think they're being toxic, like a valid tactic. Boring as fuck. Oh, uh, you mean the whole, I'm not game. gonna go for hooks and I'm just gonna slowly bleed everyone Hold out? everyone with skull merchant. They're just trying to get kills because the game's about kills. That's what people want. Right? It's not really you. I agree. Like, if you were to just take kills out of the picture and um, rate killers based on how many hooks they get, you would probably end up with a more fun DVD in general. Probably it would also be sweaty. I think you would end up with a more sweatier DVD because I think you would truly get um, good players going up against good players all the time. And one of the beauties of skill-based matchmaking is when it's not perfect and you still do get people who are like, you can win. Because like, realistically, for any game to succeed, you need to be able to win games and you need to be able to lose games. Um... If you just win, win, win games, or if you just lose, lose, lose games, it doesn't work. You need to have that that balance. And so I never want a game to to hit a, a point where it is so sweaty and we know how unbalanced asymmetric games can be. One side can dominate if they're well, uh, play well. So I think that DVD never needs to reach that point of true skill-based matchmaking. But um, I do think that Hawks is a more accurate re representation of how skillful a killer is. The thing is, back then, I thought that that was interesting. I thought, yeah, let a good team show how good they are at taking hits for each other and protecting their weaker links. But the thing is, now the game, I feel when I think altruism is no longer really fun. The whole dying on pallet with background player, flashlights being made a little bit easier. So for the like, people, buckle up. Like all of these things that have been slowly added to the game, 
are so tough. And right. I genuinely think the worst case scenario of the hooks would still be more interesting. Would you be happy then if an MMR system comes around, now you're paired against people that have around your hours? So this is what I'm scared about. And this is what kind of got me- why, 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 why are you scared about it? Shouldn't that be great? And it was like carbon copy every lobby, same map offering, same perks, same item. I, I was playing against yeah. the same five people back people. and forth. If My, um, when they first implemented skill-based matchmaking to Dead by Dela and tested it, I was on a 199 4K streak. Not win streak, 4K, 4 kills. 199 4 kill streak with uh, the twins. And there were not enough people on the server to match me a game um, when, I, when they added that. That I queued for two hours getting two players over and over again who would leave the lobby. They also didn't have enough killers on the, the server to play against. And to force a game... They got their friends who all play competitive Dead by Daylight into a Discord call and they, they, they queued up after a couple of hours and they got me and they actually in a, in a, uh, ended up ending my, uh, my 199 four kill streak in that, that game. That is the kind of MMR that behavior first brought into the game with, with skill-based matchmaking. And what True's saying here is that he would be scared to play in a, 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 a Dead by Daylight where you would get those kind of players that match your hours because i may have had um at that point i don't know something like four thousand five thousand hours maybe in dead by daylight the survivors i was playing against had a collective of like twenty thousand hours mate plus and that is a scary concept when you think about the combined experience of a, a, a team in a, a game that is asymmetric and historically has uh, been survivor sided at the top level. Um, so yeah, it, it is scary. People with the same knowledge, the same understanding. It'll be a very uninteresting game. The, the MMR one. system three years ago was like the time before it was implemented. Before it was way easier because we could just go against chill people all the time. Now we're going against really strong players. It's much harder. Obviously hooks mean something. They tell a bit of what happened in that match. They should mean something. They don't, but they should. Yeah, no, they don't in the current matchmaking system. You're absolutely correct about it. I like uh, this, this, this before and after comparison. It kind of just shows that um, true talent's position stayed the same and also Starver's position opened up based on uh, how he experienced things, which is kind of nice. And this is something I predicted when we had the last conversation where I said, if you made the game about kills, people are going to find strategies on kills. Right. Kills is the incentive. No. People would find ways to maliciously comply with behavior. Who would do that? Which is exactly what happened. <laughs> when focusing only on kills, there's a sense of nuance lost, not only in gameplay, but also in the data. A healthy design philosophy does not solely rely on basing design decisions just on kills statistically, but to give our data more leeway, hence hooks, reflecting more of a player's sense of fun and enjoyment within our game, fun chases, hooks, saves, and not only that, an allowance for killer build diversity too, which is the opposite of nerfing everything into oblivion. But yeah, when you nerf everything, you actually just make the meta stronger. Whatever the meta is going to be, it becomes stronger. Um, <clears throat> nerfing everything down that's strong just creates other more boring stale metas. You have to rebalance metas very purposefully to create diversity. Um, and I don't know how behavior are right now in August of 2024 when it comes to rebalance, but definitely for the longest of time, anything that was kind of deeming too strong, they would just nerf. And by doing so, the next meta would be more stale than the previous, which then compounded the staleness of the, the metas. So you, you really do have to be very deliberate in how you balance things and not just nerf the things that are strong to encourage the widest array of playstyles possible. At the beginning of this video, I told you, kills equals skill. <laughs> Likely was the reason for a complete revamp the way behavior developed Dead by Daylight, which is not necessarily true. For this video is a gamble to showcasing the fundamental issue to a problem that should have been fixed two years ago in the first place. Experimenting with in-game modifiers, a perk randomizer, and even a brand new 2v8 game mode. The reason why we play the game so much, man, that we are very passionate about it. <laughs> we want what's best for it, man. I love this game, and I know a lot of you guys do too. I want to make it clear 
This isn't a video intended to flame anyone, but to tell a story that I believe is an integral part for not only the betterment of the game, but the community itself. Th this game has so much potential, and I think it would be amazing to live in a world where we can see it reach its fullest. If you made it this far, I say thank you. And if there's anything I would like you to take from this video is if you have a vision behind a problem you can do something about, the only thing I ask of you is to act. Well, good video, Coconut. I think you articulated your points very well. Um, and you know what? I have a vision for Dead by Daylight. A, a vision that can be fun. A vision that includes 2v8. And that's what I'm going to be doing right now.